In this video, I'm going to be trying out Derwent Light Fast Coloured Pencils for the first time while I draw this festive kitty. So I finally bit the bullet and bought myself some Derwent Light Fast Pencils. I've been after these pencils for such a long time and I was very excited to get to use them on this project. Um, I'm also using pastel matte for the first time as well. I have to tell you, I am in love with both of these products. Oh my goodness. The Derwent Light Fast pencils went down beautifully. They blended beautifully. Um, oh, I can't say enough good things about both of these products. As you see, I'm using the Light Fast pencils now and... I'm being as messy as I like, um, which is very unusual for coloured pencils. Normally you do have to work in very small ovals with a very sharp pencil to get it to work and blend as you'd like it to. I really didn't need to with this. So game changer, so much quicker. Um, I can't say enough. Now, I'll just let you know in this project, I'm not just using the Derwent Light Fast pencils. I am also using my Polychromos by Faber-Castell and I'm using Caran d'Ache Luminance as well. It didn't matter. They all go together very, very well. Um, most of the time I was picking the colours that I used or the pencil that I used because of the colours, not for any other reason, um, because I only had a 36 set of the Derwent Light Fast. And whereas I did blend and mix a lot of colours on the paper with the, those pencils, I'm also lazy and so if I ha had the colour exactly like I wanted in my other pencils then that's what I used as well. But as you can see where I mixed, like I mixed the colour of that really bright green with my Derwent Lightfast pencils and you can see now, or you will in a bit when the um, OMS dries up, how nice and bright and luminous I could make it look. Um, this was a bit of a fun project for me. I'm not a cat person, but I saw this reference photo. It's free from Pixabay. This one, um, I made a few adjustments. I changed the crop and it had a Christmas red Christmas bag to the right hand side. I altered that because it didn't work with my composition. So I've changed it for another bauble and I love how it all came out. Um, so I'm sticking with as best I can with the Derwent Lightfast. Um, trying it in the small areas of the pine leaves here. I'm using numerous different greens and I'm not even really sharpening my pencil that much. I found with this pastel mat, I didn't need to. Um, I used the OMS on it without a problem. Um, or in the UK, it's um, low odour solvent. Um, this is, the one I'm using is Gamsol. It's not, I'm lying, it's Sansador. All I'm using is Sansador by Windsor & Newton. It's same thing, it works exactly the same as Gamsol does. Um, but everything just blended out so beautifully. The colour saturation was amazing and again, blending. I didn't have to do that many layers. Generally speaking, two layers and things were done. Um, three layers in some areas, but it, it just went so much quicker than it normally would. Now it can seem, it did seem a bit like I was tearing through my pencils, but in reality I wasn't really because I was, wasn't putting down as many layers as I normally would and sharpening as much as I normally would. So I was getting far more use out of my pencils and getting more bang for my buck. Um, because the um, pigment was going down that well on the pastel mat, it meant that I wasn't putting as many layers down. So, but I was getting the pigment that I would have done from many, many, many layers. So I really, really liked that. I will definitely be using this paint paper again. And I loved the Derwent Life House so much that I have now got the majority of the set because they're amazing. Um, yeah, so this bauble was a experiment for me i don't really normally do shiny and this came out so so well i managed to get my darks and my lights in it all blended through beautifully and by the end of the next layer that you'll see in a little while i managed to make it actually look like it was pearlescent it is these pencils are amazing um totally in love um with these pencils what i will say what i did 
um, learn by make do the bauble is just make sure that you have your contrast right. That's what made it shiny. I had my lights light enough and my darks really, really dark and next to each other. Um, so don't try and over blend because that's what made the whole thing look shiny in the end. So just a bit of a tip there for you. As you can see, I'm using lots of different colours in the pine needles as well. I didn't want it to look too natural um, because it is a it, it's a fake Christmas tree or artificial Christmas tree. But um, it was one of the ones that looked a bit more real, if that makes sense. So I'm trying to stick as close as I can to the reference photo. But when I was doing these, I wasn't exact to my reference photo. Um, it didn't matter if I missed a few leaves or whatever they're called prongs fronds I'm not sure what they're called but if I missed some of them out it didn't hugely matter it wasn't the end of the world it still managed to make it look realistic because I concentrated on the values and the direction that things were generally going so paying attention to my reference photo again on this bauble and making sure my lights and darks are in there and also paying attention to any other colors that are in there it's a gold bauble I didn't use an awful lot of golds and colours in this. I mainly used greys and purples and pinks um, with the sort of creams to add the highlights and just a few hints of the gold colour there to give it the look. You can tell it's a gold bauble, but you can see that it's reflecting everything around it. This top one was a little bit more of a challenge for me because there wasn't a bright highlight because it was only half the bauble. So um, again, I just followed my reference and concentrated on the lights and darks in that. I will go back into that one again in a minute when my um, blender has dried out. Um, but trying to make sure that, that looked pearly was a bit more of a challenge because there are no high highlights in, in, in um, that one. I'm making sure as well with these this that I'm following the background through. So where you can see all the lights are shining through, I made sure they shone through with my um, behind my tree as well I put them in first because it was easier to work around them rather than try and get them in later to make them nice and crisp and clear and at the bottom here because I've got those decorations that the naughty cat has attacked and um, removed from the Christmas tree I'm just putting in his paw first because that's sitting behind them and I thought it'd be easier for me to get the paw in pretty much all the way first and then go through and put the tiny tiny details in these decorations and then I'm not having to work around them and perhaps fuzzying them up a bit later on. Now, these were so, so tedious. Um, lots of little lines. Not, everything was really, really abstract. It was very strange to um, look at and to work out where things were. Um, I stayed as close as I could to my reference photo paying attention. Um, but I don't think it mattered too much as long as I was close enough. I didn't have to be exact, but close enough and paid attention again to my lights and my darks um, and where they are um, made them look a lot better um, because everything was very, very strange. So I just trusted my reference photo as much as I could, followed the shapes that I was seeing rather than um, anything else and just desperately trying to hope that it made sense in the end. And it did. If you follow your reference photo, even if you can't work out what you're doing and your brain's trying to tell you something different, then nine times out of ten, everything will turn out all right in the end because the photo looks right. So your work's going to look right if you're being accurate to that. The decorations have a few sort of ribbons that were once upon a time holding them together and holding them to the Christmas tree. I'm using three or four different sort of reds and purples in that. I wasn't shading in black. Um, whereas I do like to use black coloured pencils, I never use black on its own, but in this case I didn't. I used purples and oranges and reds to try and highlight the um, strings and the ribbons attached to those decorations to make them more realistic. I found that the dark purples with the red was a better highlight option than if I'd have used black, it would have looked a bit flat. But I never use black on its own anyway because it is a very flat colour. I'll use black and then I'll use blues or purples or reds or greens or something like that to deepen it. Um, it gives you a much darker black than black on its own anyway um, and adds um, a lot more interest. And the highlights look a lot more natural as well because very, very rare are um, shadows totally black. There's norm they're normally a very, very dark version of another colour. 
So still working through this. I'm onto the different type of decoration now and it had some sort of shinier bits. Luckily I have um, a product called um, Titanium White Powder and Touch Up Texture by a company called Brush and Pencil, which if you've seen my stuff you know I love their products. Um, and I use that to add my final final brightest highlights um, but I can't necessarily get with the pencil and it means that you can be a bit lazier as well with your blending I don't have to preserve any whites not that there was any white to preserve I'm using a brown paper as you can see but it just um, to add the added final sparkle at the end that's what I was doing that's what I, I use to finish everything off so I'm just adding more interest and shading to the carpet I wasn't happy with this until the very very end um because it was looking a bit just like a purple blob um so I'll add more highlights and then blend it with the background a bit better a bit later on so it all work together I'm adding more of my colors and my shading and my highlights to that bauble now again and I'll finish that off in a minute with another layer I say everything working in layers just because it's not looking right you haven't necessarily ruined anything you generally haven't ruined anything just keep going until it's looking right um this was looking quite flat for numerous um times during this whole project but the more you layer um the the more and more realistic that it looks i'm really really proud of how this one turned out um i didn't think it was going to turn out quite the way that it did and I think I can honestly say this is my proudest moment as an artist. This is um, uh, the happiest I have ever been with a finished piece. I'm very proud of how this one turned out. It's the most realistic looking, I think, that I've done. And um, I think that the Derwent Lightfast pencils and the pastel mat really, really contributed to my being able to do that. Um, at the moment, I, the small details here, I am mainly using the Polychromos, but that's because they're a more oil-based pencil. Now, Derwent Lightfast say that they're oil-based, but they're a bit softer still than the Polychromos, and they blend a bit better than the Polychromos, so they feel slightly waxier, um, but not as waxy as, say, the Caran d'Ache Luminance or um, Prismacolors do. Um, so they're definitely harder than the Caran d'Ache and the Prismacolors, but they're softer than the polychromos and because i'm working on such tiny tiny detail in these bits i want the sharp point so mainly i'm using the polychromos for where i want that sharp sharp detail that's not to say i couldn't have used the derwin light fast it just didn't feel um as comfortable doing those tiny tiny details so I'm moving on to the cat now i am starting with adding a really waxy Derwent drawing pencil white to um, the highlights in those eyes because I want to try and preserve them and that tends to stick because it is such a waxy pencil and um, so I'm not going to lose them as easily as if I'd have used another pencil and then I'm just building up slowly the colouring in my eyes and where the darks around them go. So as with most things, it's just blocking in the lights and the darks. I'm not as worried about what colours they are. I want to go as close as I can to the colour I want it to be. But it doesn't need to be exact at this time. And it's going to look quite flat at this time as well because I'm not adding all the colours. At this point as well in the cat, I'm also experimenting a little bit as to how I want to build um, the fur texture because it's slightly different. I found it slightly different than if I was working on a watercolour paper because this is pastel map. So it's a lot, um, it's got more grit to it, a bit more texture to it. And so I found I worked slightly different than I would do with um, watercolour paper. And as I said earlier, I can be slightly messier. You can see me as well with my um, kneadable um, eraser. It's a kneadable putty eraser there. I'm lifting where I've got my outline because I don't want that to show through. So where you see me dabbing on the page, I've got a kneadable eraser and I'm just literally lifting off that the excess white pigment on this. Because in order to get my image onto my pastel mat, I'd already drawn it out on some other paper. I then traced it and used Frisk um, Trace Down in white. Um, it's wax free. I just um, traced that with a stylus to transfer my image across to the pastel mat but it did leave a very very thick 
quite bright line but I found the pastel mat it lifted out beautifully just with my kneadable eraser so that's good to know and luckily worked out well for me I just kept on forgetting to um lift it when when I first started another area so you'll see me start and then go oh and then lift it out and then carry on so I've decided the best way to move on with this cat is to put my lights and darks in the majority of the places first. I'm kind of working on the left-hand side of the face and then I'll move across to the right-hand side of the face a bit later on. But I'm just putting my lights and darks where they need to go, blending them out and then working on another area while that dries. And as you can see, back to the eyes now, building some more colours. So I'm always using lots and lots of colours. I had a tray full of pretty much all of my colours when I was doing the cat. Um, so I had greens and greys and blues um, for the eye as well as browns and blacks. Um, and for the fur, oh my goodness, there were so many. There was warm greys and cold greys and browns and a bit of magenta and a bit of kaput mortuum and... Oh, so many colours. Um, because fur isn't just one colour and I made my life more difficult by not choosing a cat of one colour. I can't remember what this type of fur is um, called. But there are so many different colours in it. So um, lots and lots and lots of different pencils used. I'm moving on to the right side now and I'm doing the ear. I'm trying to pay attention what I can see through the fur in the ears when I'm doing them. Um, it's important to remember that there are details inside of an ear to try and make it as realistic as possible. So well, even though there are a lot of white hairs over both of the ears, I'm trying to pay attention to the shading behind that to make that as accurate as I possibly can. So that when I put the hair detail over those, they look correct and as accurate as they can do, or as I can make them anyway. Um so I'm just adding that in first and then going down and blocking in where the lights and darks on the rest of the fur around the face are. Now, my reference photo, as I said earlier, had a sort of Christmas, I don't know if it was a stocking or a bag, but there was something there and it was bright red and it was, it was mostly cut off and there was a little white tuft at the top by the ear where it was and there was a red corner of the bag where the bottom bauble is. I didn't like it, I took it out. That's the good thing about being an artist. You can do that. And I replaced it with a bauble. So sort of from just to the right of the ear, I'm pointing, you can't see. Why am I pointing? <laughs> but just to the right of the ear, um, there was sort of the white fluff, like from a Santa's hat or, you know, from a anything Christmassy that's red. Um, and so I kind of have to, kind of had to make up how the right hand side of that body was going to go because in the photo it wasn't there. Um, I decided that I was going to keep with the flow of the fur and just sort of try and sort of blend it out with less and less detail because you wouldn't see it further away anyway, as close a detail as you would in the face. So that's the way I went with that. As you can see, I'm just building up again now. I'm adding some more highlights. I'm starting to work on fur texture now. So I've got my base layer down and I'm starting to build fur texture. Still not adding my final details. I'm just starting to go with the flow of the shape of the fur. Pay attention which direction it's growing. That's the direction that you want your pencil to be heading towards when you're doing the fur strokes. And I'm still blending out now. I'm, I'm not to my final layers. I'm still using my um, Sansador or my pencil blender um, to mix those colours together together a little bit and it's just giving me this nice lovely soft look and as I build and build the less and less of the blender I'll use until I'm just using my pencil strokes just small little dashes never straight they're always slightly curved and they're always going in the direction that the fur is supposed to be flowing in so make sure you are looking very closely at your reference photo um, the biggest thing I could say to you or any artist would say to you is make sure you are looking mainly at that reference photo you should probably be looking at that reference photo for far longer than you're looking at your actual artwork make sure you are noticing where the fur is going what direction it's flowing in notice the shadows behind the fur things like that pay attention to because they will make all the difference to your work now, this cat took me many 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 layers 
is even though the um, Derwent Lightfast is very forgiving and doesn't need an awful lot, and the Pastel Matte is very forgiving and doesn't um, need an awful lot of pigment, um, still to build up the realistic quality takes an awful lot of layers. It looks like it's going down really, really fast in this. I had about 17 hours worth of footage by the time I edited this. So you are seeing an awful, awful lot of work um, being compressed down into a very, very short amount of time. Now, just it took 17 hours for me. It might take you 30, it might take you seven. Um, everybody works at different speeds. So don't worry about how long it's taking you. Um, just pay attention to your layers and your reference photo and to your contrast. So your lights and darks are one of the most important things in any picture. So just make sure you are paying attention to them. And also, when you're doing your shading, make sure you're paying attention as to what needs a harsh line and what needs a soft line. As you can see down there by the, leg, by, by the paw, um, where I've just done that leg, it's a very soft line because it's in a bit of shadow. It doesn't need to be solid. If it was solid and really in focus, it wouldn't look right. It would throw off the balance of the picture. And so make sure you are paying attention. As you can see on the left-hand side with the fur, the side is very, very soft. It's blending away. Um, I don't need to add any outline or harsh lines there. If I did, it would start looking very cartoony. So just make sure you're paying attention as to where you're shading and how you're adding your shadows. Because where everything is shadows, some lines are harsher than others. So pay attention to that as well. I'm just softening down his undercarriage because there are lots and lots of greys. I'm using an awful lot of cold greys and warm greys um, in this. And I'm also using an awful lot of a very light sort of grey purple. It's a purple grey colour um, that worked lovely for his fur. Because also you've got to pay attention to what's going on around your subject as well. And just because you know your cat is, say, brown and grey, um, it's not and, and a bit of white, it's not going to necessarily be that that you're drawing. Um, if you pay attention, you'll notice that other things are reflecting in the fur. So you will have purples and blues and magentas and um, violets and things like that in fur. So I've got an awful lot of purple going on or sort of lilac-y colours going on because I'm wanting them to reflect the carpet that he's stood on. So it's another day now, I'd left that overnight and I'm just finishing off adding highlights and contrast to my bauble that I've kind of made up at the bottom there. I didn't have a reference photo for that one really. Um, for the colours I wanted I had a picture of a red bauble that I used that was in the sort of position I wanted and made up the shading and colour um, that I needed it to be because I thought if it was red like my reference photo or the one that I would borrowed for, to add on to my reference photo I thought it would distract um, it being at the edge of the page like that. So just adding in sort of final details and smudging out bits that need finishing off. And here I am with the Touch Up Texture and Titanium White to add in my final brightest highlights. I notice in a minute that I'm really struggling on the left hand side to get my brush at the right angle and not be in front of the camera. So I'm going to shift that in a minute so that I can actually get those fine hairs in where I need them to be. There we go. And I can get the angle an awful lot better now on that left hand side. So no cat will be without his whiskers and adding the final little sparkles to all of the decorations. And just touching up a few bits where the good thing about the touch up texture and titanium white is you can draw over it. And so that I did to just finish it off and tidy him up. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please leave piece. me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. That way you'll be notified of any new content that I post. For now though, bye guys.